Welcome to the Community Discussions Host Onboarding. Community Discussions are a great way to contribute to the Carpentries community. We are so happy to have you. I'm Alicia Kral, the Director of Community, and I will be leading you through the onboarding today. Uh, before we begin, I want to briefly go over the agenda for the recording. We will start by going over the types of community discussions offered through the Carpentries and how to lead a community discussion. We'll then go through some what ifs. So this will help you prepare for any issues you may encounter while leading a call. We will then end with next steps and share some resources. If you have any questions as you listen to this presentation, please email community at carpentries.org. So let's get started. First, we wanna cover the types of community discussions that are offered by members of our community. These calls can be led on any day, at any time, and in any language, which is determined by you, the host of the call. The first type of community discussion and the most commonly ran is the pre and post workshop discussion. These discussions are designed for those getting ready to teach or having recently taught a workshop to discuss their experience with other community members. Discussions center around preparing for upcoming workshops, reflections on previous workshops, as well as curriculum and instructor notes taken from um, workshops. The second type of community discussion is a themed community discussion. This is where you can showcase your expertise to the community by leading a discussion on a particular topic of interest. Topics range from teaching your first workshop to community building strategies and have included how to run a workshop with no money, interpreting and acting on feedback, best use of the etherpad and navigating unpredictable learning environments. The final call type is a Carpentries conversation. These are hosted by one of our, our committees or task forces to provide the community with the opportunity to learn about and discuss new developments and programs in the organization. There's a list of current committees and task forces listed here, but you can also find them on the Carpentries website at carpentries.org. We will now go through how to lead a community discussion. You can also find this information detailed in the Carpentries Handbook for later reference. The first thing you will need to do is sign up to lead a call. These are scheduled quarterly. A Calendly link will be shared with all the discussion hosts via our communication channels on the date specified for each quarter as indicated in the Carpentries Handbook. So for example, November 15th for quarter one of the next year, February 15th for scheduling quarter two, May 15th for scheduling quarter three, and August 15th for scheduling quarter four. The schedule period is open for a minimum of two weeks. All the information entered into the Calendly link will automatically generate a reservation on the community calendar and will pre-populate the community discussions etherpad. Once the scheduling period closes each quarter, you can only add a community discussion by filling out a form that is linked to in the handbook. We ask that you make this an exception because all the information must then be entered manually by a member of the core team and this can take some time. This is a screenshot of the information that is automatically generated in the community discussions etherpad through the quarterly scheduling process. It includes the event date and time, as well as a link for a community member to find the time in their time zone. Information on how to join the call is also provided, and there is space for community members to sign up for those calls they wish to attend. You will see your name and email address appear for each call you have signed up to lead. Um, before you lead your first call, there are a few things to note. You will find an agenda for each of the different community discussion types at the bottom of the community discussion etherpad. You can copy and paste the template under the space where participants sign up to attend. Be sure to sign on as close to the start time as you can so you can welcome community members as they sign on. Introduce yourself as the host and add a link to the etherpad in the Zoom chat where the notes will be captured. It can sometimes be difficult to take notes while facilitating a discussion. If you do not have a co-host, ask if someone would be interested in serving as a note taker. If there aren't any vo volunteers, not to worry. Just jot down as much as you can to capture the highlights of the conversation. 
A host code will also be sent to you for leading your discussion as part of the automated quarterly scheduling process. You should receive it two weeks before your scheduled event, and this will give you access to Zoom host features. So that includes polls and breakout rooms, for example. Um, these will not be available to you without that um, host functionality. If for some reason you do not receive a host code before your event, please email community at carpentries.org to receive the code. To activate the host code, when you sign into the Zoom link provided, you can click on participants to display the list of participants. You'll then see a box at the bottom of the list, claim host. If you click on it, and then you'll be asked to enter a host key. Once entered, click claim and all the host features will then display um, to you on your Zoom. One of those features will allow you to enable the live transcript. There will be a button in the features panel, live transcript that you should select before the event begins. Participants can then select or deselect the feature if they want to view or not review the live transcript. Um, depending on the number of people who are attending your session or how you would like for participants to engage with each other, you may want to use the breakout rooms feature. There will be a breakout rooms button included alongside all of the other feature buttons available to you as the host. Once you click on it, it will allow you to assign a specific number of breakout rooms and indicate how you would like them to be assigned, either automatically, manually, or let participants choose their room. Letting participants choose a room can be a great option if you want each breakout room to have a different discussion topic. They can then choose the one that they are most interested in contributing to. Some additional tips for leading a discussion. Um, the agenda template is there to provide you with some main points to cover, but feel free to let participants take the discussion in a direction they would like for it to go. Be flexible. Um, the question prompts are there also to help guide the conversation and do not require a response from everyone. Let participants know they can answer questions by raising their hand or typing their response into the chat. Everyone has individual preferences and in how they like to contribute, so be mindful of that as you host your calls. Also, don't feel like serving as a host implies that you are an expert in all things carpentries. You don't need to know the answers to everything, and there are likely others on the call who may be able to answer. If not, you can always send them to one or more of our communications platform to ask their question, so via Slack or topic box. Always try to leave at least five minutes at the end of the call to see if there are any final thoughts or comments. This is a great way to transition the discussion to wrap the call up on time. Once you are done with the discussion, you will need to follow a few steps. First, archive the etherpad by clicking the star in the top right corner. This will save all the notes from your call. Second, fill out the host questionnaire. There will be a link provided on the etherpad for your community discussion. It will ask you to copy over the list of attendees, but be sure to remove no-shows when you do this. Once you have completed the questionnaire, you can clear all the information for your session from the etherpad. This includes the date, time, list of attendees, and all the notes. You may be asking yourself, what happens to all of that information? Um, not to worry, you archived it in that first step. So as you lead a community discussion, there are a lot of different scenarios that can arise. It's difficult to prepare yourself for any and everything, but we have compiled a list of common questions, the what ifs, that will help you get a better sense of what you may encounter. And all of these um, questions and their responses are also in the Carpentries Handbook for later reference. So the code of conduct is on the agenda for all the community discussions. It should be referenced at the start of each call and you can ask participants if they have any questions about it before continuing. It is helpful to add a link to the code of conduct in the chat um, so participants can easily reference it. But what if someone breaks the code of conduct and that violation has to be reported? There are detailed guidelines in the Carpentries Handbook on how reports should be submitted and how they will be handled once reported. If you have not yet fully read through the code of conduct, you are strongly encouraged to do so before leading a community discussion. 
So what if someone is loud, obnoxious, and or talks down to other people? This is why it is important to familiarize yourself with the code of conduct and remind participants of, of it at the beginning of each call. This type of behavior would be in violation of the policy and you could ask the person to leave. What if you do not know the answer to someone's questions and no one in the room does either? It is totally fine if you do not know all the answers. In such a situation, you can inform participants of the various channels to bring questions to the community. So that includes Slack or the topic box list serves. They can always send their questions to community at carpentries.org as well to get a response from a member of the core team. So what if there's no co-host or note taker and the session is fully booked? As a host, you are more than welcome to take a few notes. However, there is no need to take down every single thing that is said. Note down important points, making sure to add links to useful information. Also encourage the participants to contribute to the notes on the community discussions etherpad as we discussed earlier. So what if someone does not have a headset and can't control their background noise? So as a host, you will have the privilege to mute other participants, or you could simply ask the person directly to mute their microphone. You can read more about how to use host features in Zoom in the Carpentries Handbook. So what if you forget to complete the host questionnaire? So the participants will not have updated profiles for the checkout sessions and will take a lot of administration to solve this challenge. So please, as much as possible, remember to fill in the form directly after hosting your session so that we do not have this um, administrative challenge. As I mentioned before, there are a lot more um, frequently asked questions included in the Carpentries Handbook. They include, what if someone joins in late? What if I'm hosting a discussion and there are no pre-post workshop debriefs? What if you as the host have a poor internet connection and are unable to communicate? What if someone talks too much? What if no one shows up? What if I'm having trouble understanding one of the attendees? So again, lots of resources in the Carpentries Handbook that we invite you and encourage you to read through. Um, so I want to just take another minute to go through next steps now that you have listened to this um, onboarding recording. So now that you have watched this, you should email community at carpentries.org to be added as a community discussion host. You will be added to this discussion host topic box listserv using the email address you provided, which will have you start receiving emails um, relevant to serving as a community discussion host. And you can unsubscribe from this list at any time. If you are on Slack, we also encourage you to join the discussion host channel. All communication relevant to discussion host are sent through the email listserv and also posted on Slack, including when it is time um, to sign up to those quarterly calls. Um, be sure to note the three important resource, resources that I've mentioned throughout the recording. So the first, the community calendar is available on the Carpentries website and will show all upcoming community events, including the community discussions. The community discussions etherpad also shows all upcoming calls, who is leading them, and who is signed up to attend. You may want to check in a couple of days before your scheduled call to see if you have too few individuals signed up or too many. If either scenario arises, email community at carpentries.org, and members of the community development team can help get the word out about your call or could attend your call to support as a co-host. You can also reach out to the topic box or Slack to see if another community member is available to support you. Finally, all the information I shared with you today can be found in the Carpentries Handbook. It should be your go-to resource for all things Carpentries, including leading a community discussion. So thank you so much for participating in this community discussion onboarding for the Carpentries. If you have any questions after watching this video, I encourage you to reach out on the topic box listserv or Slack channel I previous, previously mentioned, or feel free um, to email the community development team at community at carpentries.org at any time. Thank you.